more so, and their major problem is they now put the coats on the bases and they just put some sand over top. And I'll see it go through a, a cycle, and especially at Belmont this time of year, all the horses are restricted to the back track. After about two, three years, they have uh, a huge amount of horses on that track every day that grind the sand down, gets more powder. And probably next year, you'll see an increase in quarterbacks coming. Need for blue lines just because they get put in order. And we did a thing on uh, caudal hook pain up in, uh, for the equine practitioner. And I'll just kind of go through this applications problem. product application will be the big thing for success. I mean, there are a lot of things. We'll kind of cover what will go wrong in most cases. This is what I use mostly. Now this is uh, Silver Queen, the thoroughbred shoe, so it's got a blunted toe. You don't have to go that route. You can do on steel shoes, hand shoes. I do a variety of different horses. Here's uh, what we're going after. Now this horse, obviously the picture on your left is a horse at the end of the shoeing cycle. And I laid those lines in there to show how much of a uh, change it will make in the angle, where the center of the shoe is. We'll go with the yellow first, that's the overall length of the, the foot. So obviously when I shoe them, I brought that back to so five eighths of an inch. If you look back at the heel, you can see where the heel of that shoe is. When we get done gluing them, we bring it back and support the ball. Almost 95 or 95% of the horses I glue, you could easily nail them, but that's not the problem. That's not what's causing the source. It's that pain back in the heel. And this is a great reason. Uh, make sure you feel this after. You can feel how hard these bars are, and that's what jams up into the balls. As soon as you can relieve that pressure and take that pounder away, they'll start coming south. You can see the angle we changed the blue line on the front after it's glued on. And the big thing is getting that heel back. Now, this being said, if I did this without the rubber in there, if I moved the shoe back that far, I'm sure all you guys have glued, you know what the result is. You might, he might be good for four or five days on a tough track. I'm talking thoroughbred race horses. I don't think you need to make it that part of the standard bread, but they'll start soaring up. And by within a week, you're pulling them off because they just can't make that pounding to dissipate that concussion. These are hind shoes. So you can see the same thing. I'm not moving back that far, but I'm changing the angle and just getting the toe back. But you'll see in the next picture, I'll leave that on you. Can, uh, well, you can just see, I'll tell you what, thoroughbred race horses, when you get these kind of horses to change them, to change everything. Because that's where they're driving from, and they just break over so much easier. What's your cycle? I'll go by the horse. Some horses throw feet, some don't. I've got horses right now in Belmont that are five, six weeks, seven weeks. I've got some just don't go foot. I'll be checking, looking to see where the heel of that shoe is compared to the ball. So you can see, right on, that's the same horse. You can see he's just right down in the bulb once you pull the shoes. Now, in the standard red world, we went through all this stuff. But this is a mushroom shoe. Back early 80s, maybe even earlier than that. Yeah, it'd be early 80s is when that showed up. Came up out of Sweden, I think. Obviously, it's been around forever. Recycled back through our uh, different shoes we use. Horses would go sound immediately, but they just can't take that kind of pressure in the rock. It might, it might be one shoeing cycle, by the second one you run into the problems because it just destroys the product. So you're trying to share the load between your, your sole frog and the, and the shoe itself. Flip flops, invaluable tool in the standard bread world. I know a lot of guys, that will, I shouldn't say a lot, but a lot, there are a lot of guys that will switch shoes out in between racing. They'll put on a little of shoe to race, speed to go, and in between the races, they'll throw a flip flop on this. But these shoes are fairly hard too, actually. But they, everything keeps changing with time. 
You can see the width. I'm just showing the width of the shoe. A dime is five eighths of an inch. So this would just be a typical uh, full switch for a standard. Obviously, they're trying to get a little weight. But when the web of your shoe isn't that wide, and we'll get into this going on where our problems come from, you're keeping the steel out on the wall where you want it. That's your racing plate compared to uh, the, the, the full switch. A lot of them put pads on, you have some type of pad failure. You can start to see in this horse, obviously it took pictures of this the horse that's called in because it's kind of foot sore. These are, we make shoes where we put the, the pad and heel in. Now these, I'm not sure how long they were on. That's the, the one size. They're on standard red, so they hold up, they won't break down. These are different types of glue ones, the Sigma Goose. But you can see, I don't necessarily have a problem. Well, it's a lot of things. I don't know where this was in the shoe cycle. Obviously, I'm seeing them at the end or somewhere through that cycle they come up sore and decided to change. These are the polyflex <coughs> to movement, but can it be excess? Absolutely, which we'll see shortly here. And then it goes to application. You can see these, if you look at your, your heels, the way they're tucked in, they're right on the sole, they're not out where they, that's the beauty of glue on you're giving them more wall. These are, I don't know, they want to protect the sole, that kind of stuff. These are just ones that took off. If you've ever felt these shoes when you pull them off, that, that glue is extremely hard and just jamming on the sole. Same thing back in the bar area. Another one big lift. This horse's feet were just shot. I'll go through this quickly. I'll use uh, Thrush Buster. And you see how you have some white black disease going on. I'll take off anything that's decayed with the grinder. You can see where the thrush buster was on there. And it is in, it's great for uh, getting to the end of any kind of fungus. If you're doing white line disease, same thing. If you put that in, that laminite is knit so well together when it gets to the end where it's knit perfectly, the thrush buster can't penetrate anymore. But you'll be painting it and you'll see how it will migrate up between the wall and the laminite. Just keep chasing that because if you don't get all that uh, fungus out of there, that's the starting point. So if you cut them all the way back and it's, you know, an inch from the cornet band and you don't take it all the way, that's the starting point of the fungus. So it's going to come all the way down with it. Old style glue on. These are, we put in the, the rubber strip just to keep the pressure off the sole. And basically just glue, put them back together. Thin wall. See where your shoe's setting? It's not even on the wall. This is double wide. And you'll see a lot of this at the end of the shoeing cycle, they're growing forward. And because your shoes are hooked in, it just pulls them right off the wall, a little thin wall, of course, and they'll be sitting right in the sole. That's showing you the thickness of this horse. I haven't even, haven't even touched them. You can see I pulled the shoe in. I'm just showing. I ground the bottom of the sole just to show the thickness of the wall. Here we are again. I've got a shoe on there and now. I'll trace on the inside of the shoe. That's where the shoe was sitting. So I'm just drawing. I cleaned the sole up and drew on that sole just so you have a marker. You know where the original. Too. It's just uh, obviously a, a bad deal in Belgium. Just showing the thickness. Once again, same thing. These, this is back 2008, it's probably one of the last years we did it. Everything has changed. I had these glue ones were the ones I was using, and I wouldn't put any glue on top of that pad because I wanted the heels to be able to move. I wanted that foot to be able to move, so we'd have to lock them in with those clips. But the problem is, if a little bit of glue seeps in underneath your sole and that pad, that's enough to get them off. 
Unfortunately, as all the way over in Ireland owned one, and that's exactly what happened. And we thought it'd be perfect if we pulled his feet back just like the first slide you saw. And the blacksmith said he had managed to see his mm -hmm. right. So about three days later, we pulled his shoe. He said, yeah, a little bit of glue in the sole there. And as soon as we skimmed that off, we nailed the same shoes we back on. He was absolutely perfect. So then here come the changes. You can see the, the clips there, but you can see how far out I'm setting that shoe. Now the black pad, you see how we channeled it all the way out, all the way back to the heel. That's only maybe three quarters of an inch off from the tip of the heel. You go back the other way, you can see how it ran all the way up. What ends up happening, it makes that whole rubber move more because they don't have so much rubber. And we'll, we'll show a video of how much you see the move. Long so you can see these seals are just totally collapsed, rolled over. Once you trim it away, you can see, I think the next slide will show. All right. You can see how your walls roll in under and the flares are below. And when you trim it, there's a little bit of a bruise. But that's your, you've got a piece, you've got your wall laying on the sole and then your shoe on top of that. It's almost like having a stone underneath your, uh, the equivalent of you having a stone in your shoe. You're just trying to get that pressure on that sole. Another one bucking over. You trim it back, you can see where the white line is. Roll it way over. They sit a shoe on that, it's just a bunch of leverage. And then you trim it back out, you see your white line all the way around. I have other, I'm kind of running through these quickly, but I have cases that will come up and you'll see it crystal clear. Another one, the foot sore, obviously he's got a plate on. Obviously a little out of whack. A lot out of whack. <laughs> you can see your rivets sticking up there, and that's what we're getting to. You can see where your work points are. It just shows how much these feet will expand. That rivet obviously is embedded into a sole at some point. Now I've trimmed the inside, so you've got that much steel laying on a sole, it's a pretty flat foot, of course. This must be the other foot, obviously not quite as bad. Be a ton of pressure on that inside quarter. You can see how it's being hammered away in that. Now you're starting to see where the bruise was on this one when I trimmed it. That's, if you don't get on this, that's going to be your wall separation over time because you get an abscess that starts to ruin underneath your sole and there's only one place where it can go, it'll travel up the wall and blow up the heel. And it's a, that's the only time we put it. It's everything that comes off the sole. And that's that old style new one. But you can see how far back we moved the shoe. You've got it with that egg bar that he had. It wasn't really a true egg bar, but you're supporting the frog. You're just trying to take some of the pressure off the quarters. Usually, most horses I've worked on, they're very thin walled through the quarters, and that's where the wall breaks down. So that everything behind where it's broke down is what takes all the pressure. Probably the other one. Here, now, this is very difficult. Three quarters for good reason. Now you can imagine that shoe sitting on that wall, sitting on the sole. Pull the shoe. Inside quarter is the worst of the two. But now I trim it. See so your wall there? If you just follow your white line back. So you've already got an abscess, the beginning of a, a pocket that was there. It doesn't blow out there, then it's going to travel up the wall. And now I've chased it a little farther. You can see how it's migrating up the wall. So my job is to get a shoe on there, restrict the glue to the outside, support the bow. This foot was actually pretty firm when it was said and done. There you go, there's a side by side. And there's the, once again, you see it's the old style glue on because they have the rivets where those clips were. But it's the same, same idea. So 
So you can see, the, you, well, once again, that had that black rubber that ran all the way up to the rivet. So there's very little pressure than beyond that sole at all. And they're showing you how, how, how far back we brought the shoe. What? You look at it. I don't even have to say anything on this. So you can see how far back the shoes come to the heel. You can see the lines on that. And you can see how far we set it up. You're just trying to get everything off that sole. Now, once again, where that shoe sits, you come up here and feel this, how hard it is. It's just driving these bars on the bolts. <laughs> Showing where we're at, bringing it back. He's still not off the ground. I won't wedge him. A lot of guys like wedging shoes to pick them up, change the angles. I want them to grow back in. Number. The reason I don't wedge them, I don't have any success with them. When I wedge them, they don't make it. They're they're not. I want them 100. percent I want 95 or 180. I want a nice cool flight and reaching out and not being scared of landing them heels in the dirt. When I wedge them, I just lose all the support that I need from them. <coughs> I have no problem with this. I've already, I'm already moving them in the right direction because I'm bringing the toe back. Hey, Dan, I got a question. Yes, sir. How would that foot test with the toe capture with the bar or foot pressure with the toe like this? How would they respond to foot test? Over the bars? Well, the you know, it's interesting. Most, I hardly ever use my post testers, to tell you the truth. Because you look, obviously, I've already got a problem because of the way they're moving. The first thing I'm doing as soon as I get these shoes on, I like using copper tops. Depending how bad the foot is, the copper tops will keep them just firm. I don't like mud. I tell my guys, I say, don't mud them until two days where you're going to see me. Just so I can manage the foot, trim it out. I want it hard. And that's the best success I have. Obviously, that horse would be sore. Testing them. It would, most of the horses, I mean, I can, when you can flex the sole with the thumbs, you know you're going to help. It's, I mean, it's going to take time. I have some horses that get better in two days. I've had horses take up to three weeks because they just got to generate some sole and keep tightening them up. But they'll get there. Unfortunately, it's trainers that get patients and they want a two day off to something else. So. This is a horse that you're looking at a blue on shoe. You can see where that shoe sits. This one here will be probably uh, you can tuck in. You can see where your cornet band is, that whole inside the inside uh, uh, the medial shoe just tucked right in on the knee. That's the shoe that I took off. Now, after I trimmed the foot, I just set it back on to where it would have been. And there's my marks. Now that's where I'm gonna move my shoe to. You can see this horse got the tongue the wall. That's not a problem at all. It's where the shoe would sit. And he's a standard bread on a, a rope. You just can't take that that concussion once again. So all we did, we loaded him with the, the regular pads on there and the way he went. <coughs> That's quite a difference, I think. Numbers are going out. But anyway, you can see how far out. This is the beauty of the ones. You give them more wall, throw bread, every throw bread, you move it up. Generally, we walk one size, sometimes two, depending on what's going on. And same thing, just getting a little support back under the bulbs. <coughs> This is a quarter horse here. And so that's where really like, there might be a knot, might be a double line. I don't know. I'm only going to size six. He wasn't that big of a quarter horse. That's a race plate, obviously. Now I haven't glued it yet, you can see where we're heading. There it is glued on. 
just in case you think I'm messing with their lives. We'll go back. If you look at how far the end of that shoe is from the end of like your bulbs, you can see how it's tucked up into the data. And just racing plates. I use racing plates on I put them on the big jumpers. I've used a first size case for it. A little wider web. Instead of I'm trying to keep the frog using the frog. And when you put on the big, you know, stout uh, eventing shoes, you just you just uh, eliminating the frog altogether. When they're talking there, they, some guys like a firm setup. You don't want that frog moving at all. That, that's a combi plate that comes out of Sweden. It's, uh, I'm not sure when they came around and started, but that's uh, standard bridge use a lot of them. Then it's just a, you know, a padded up bar shoe. Egg bar, I don't use them at all, but I don't run into issues like Steve shoe on the border horses that are arthritic and all the rest. Generally all mine are just kind of sore footed. And uh, egg bar is just, for me it's never really, it's, well not number one, it's not really a competitive shoe in the racing world. They'll do anything they can to get away from the bar shoe. Here's the razor shoe. And the beauty of the razor, if you when you look at it, it's such a low profile and it's hollowed out from the outside edge, and that just lets that dirt come in and load up that frog. I would use these solely with the throw rims, but they've outlawed other rims, and this is really a non-aggressive shoe compared to a regular queen's blade. If you look at one blue to hot, there's, uh, it's much easier for them to break over in this little outer rim because it's not an aggressive shoe at all. Now we poured this and this is one of Connie's at the farm. That we uh, inhaled on with just the pads and then he poured us. The, uh, even with the pads, you can see how uh, how you don't have that big gap from the frog to the ground. Now here's how much these pads will move. Allow a foot to move on top of them. I actually found this out at the summit. Some guy came up and he said, how well these pads stay? And he took his thumb and he started moving that thing. I had no idea. I would never have had that. Had that idea that would allow them. Now, the next thing we're looking for is to get a little bit of uh, movement up and down with the bulge. So, that's not really, and it'll just absorb that concussion when they hit the ground. Generally, I'll, uh, I just use that set now. I used to use a, a, a slower set, but you can't beat that set for adhesions. I don't like it that much for quarter cracks. We'll talk about that a little bit this afternoon when we get into quarter cracks. But, and then I'll load up the outside edge of the shoe with a knife. That's a pretty good size knife. We were at a, a clinic there one time where guys were loading it up. And, one thing you always got to remember: don't try and unload that knife all in one shot. You just take, you're just trying to lay a bead on. You can practice that. Okay. Anything that's the same consistency is just glue. If the excess glue goes on the on the sides. Then you just set it on. Look at this foot. It was just a mess. You can tell just looking at it from that angle. You want to do it fairly quickly. You're setting that shoe symmetrically to that frog. If there are flares, they're coming off. So you're going to see one pretty shortly where we that's exactly what we're going to do. 
which is in, it's very easy with blue watch and mailing that's a different world. Well, the glue gets set up a little bit and just trim up the excess. I don't want anything hard in that horse's soul at all. Here's another one where I put the lines. You can see how far I've removed the shoe. A lot of times I'll do that for the benefit of the trainer. If it's a new trainer, just so they get the idea of what we're trying to accomplish. Yeah, that's important. Until they, you know, they'll see it. Yeah. And here's one. Typically, we went from a five to a seven. I don't know. Uh, that was before. Well, that's the second one. We got the one blue. Now I'm just taking some pictures. But you can see how far your your heel is away from the end of that shoe. You can see how we're pulling back. Basically, you're trying to make a comfortable looking foot on that horse to the size of the horse. The uh, Mitchell saying that it has to be a three inch toe. In New York, they love cutting short. They and love what? They love trimming feet very short. They don't want very much toe. And if you don't, they'll be looking for somebody new. I don't know what's in their mindset. That most guys that come in and wow, they've got them short. True. A lot of horses I work on will change from one trainer to another. If I can give them another quarter inch of foot, I can get another quarter inch of depth of sole. And that's all it takes. They're just, you know, they're not made to have that little short foot. Some can get away with it. You're talking about short. Are you talking about sole depth? Or, or I'm talking about the, the length of the toe or the length of the foot. If I can give it another quarter inch and not touch the sole, then I'll get another depth of sole of a quarter of an inch because there's nothing there. Most of these things, like with your thumbs, you're feeling the move. Obviously, they're not going to be like that. And that that tape there, that's a beautiful tape that you, you lay in that trench. Now, that stuff will never harden. You can feel it once we, we glue one out there. The idea is I want nothing hard for sole. And the last thing I've been doing, and I'll tell you what, it is amazing. I, I had a horse over at Parks for John service. And man, he was, he had no foot, nice two-year-old. He was sore, sore. He glued shoes, and he's moving in the right direction. And about a week and a half later, uh, so just had me at Parks and the Bobby is Assistant said, he's going down to take a look at this. I mean, he's jogging down the country. He's not happy. He's just kind of like on eggshells. He said, well, he was pretty good. He said, I don't know if the track got hard. What he's just doing. Well, a year before, I was working on one for Chad Brown at a real nice horse. And I said, let's go with Chad. Just work that well. He says, I don't think he'll be able to pressure. He said, can you three quarters? I said, I'll tell you what we'll do. Let's grind our shoe down. It's nice and thin. So that heel doesn't touch the ground when he lands in something hard, like this is going down the road. And, it, and this is the one I did for Chad was much more removed, much farther forward. And he was absolutely perfect. Well, anyway, go back to the one parts for service. I said, Bobby, hang on here a second. I took a rasp and just ground him like that. Just so when he landed, he's not driving and not going to that fall. I said, walk through the barn there for five minutes. They brought him out five minutes later. It was 90% better. What track well, was on, on the road, he was 90% better. On the track, he was absolutely perfect. And since that day, I used it every horse I could. Every one. And the ones that I always struggled with, no problems. You don't have to do it. You can be one of those guys that said, I tried that 20 years ago, didn't work then. That's fine. You get things in your head. If you're locked into a zone, you're going to move. You're in trouble. Just try things. It's the, the biggest trouble we get into in this industry is thinking we got all the answers. Greatest thing that ever happened when I watched Fish down in Florida. And I looked at these, these bars sticking up in the wall. And that's everything started changing again the way I, I looked at 
feet. I've never seen one resected like that. So anyway, that's where we were in 08. So anyway, we can go outside. Oh, hang on, one more. Alright, Belmont. You see how shoes are telling out? These ones are not tucked in. They are um, the polyflex shoe. And it's beautiful. It's like what? It's moved, but if you got one that's flaring, that shoe's not going to shoot anything. When I when I blew a horse that's got bad flares, I'm not concerned about thinning out of the walls because that wall is locked out of the shoe. It cannot flare. As long as we're timely and reshoeing them. You know, you got the line comes down and foot and it takes off. Well, I'll skip that right off. As long as we stay on them, the new wall in full thickness just keeps growing straight down. As long as, if you let them go, and they'll, they'll sway a little bit, but not as bad. And you'll see how much we can pull this guy. He's, uh, well, you can see how far the heel is away from the, from the end of the, of the ball. I don't know where it is in the cycle on this, this horse. He just wasn't the sound. Once again, you can see. And that's what I said right at the beginning, it's application. But it's the guy putting it on, you're, you're trying to support them all, get rid of soul pressure, bring it down back, they're lot to get them balanced. I would say every horse in Belmont that is shod in a conventional way with nails, they lower the inside of the feet. They drop. Are you racing players here? You guys, any of you guys shoe throw rich? Like race horses? At Belmont, they will drop every one to try and get that pressure up here. Inside quarter. I'll shoe every one dead level. I don't want them. I guess my problem is my horses all have their ankles are puffy, beginning of suspension. But if they don't want to land on their heels. They all stumble. You'll see tongue, you'll see bruises in the toes. So they're just kind of stabbing. And what we'll do is we'll just set them up so they start reaching out. Basically, it all fades away. But I want them shot dead level my eyes. If they're not right after that, then we're going to an x-ray to see how things are sitting inside the bump capsule. Because 95% of them come from right up the <coughs> This one stood up a little more. These are the shoes that come off. This is before. If you're wondering why we keep the red rim on now, that really sticks so well in that red rim. It won't will not come off the foot, so it's just better to be. That's what we're going from, too. He's going into size eight. I'm not sure what size the polyfoot should be there. I would suggest it, or guess it's a six. Trim it out, you can see how your white line stretched. That's where the whole area just pulled that white line out. You see it bellied a little bit in the quarters. When I'm in that, I'll trim that wall down. I just want better adhesion. So I'll just trim that white line off the wall. And so when we're uh, on the glow, I know I got great adhesion. Basically, the foot's made. It's not that, I mean, you've seen the other ones with very thin wall. That's, he's just, the flares are what we're getting us in trouble. So we tighten them down. You can see how it's overhanging here. That's how much we're going to bring them back. I just want to pull the toe back on them. You can see on the outside that flare, you can see where the shoe is. The other foot's obviously not as bad. You know, when I get that trim enough, if you're looking at the face of the wall, I'm not too far off where I want to be. Support back under the walls. Like I said, I won't, I won't wedge them up. I'll wedge the ones behind. I have no problem wedging a horse behind. If they got them on the pole, I got no problem with that. And it's actually pretty easy to do. I don't have any 
pictures in these immediate slides. You can double up the black tape just to elevate it where you want. Glue and shoes on the hind feet, exact same method as the front. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I don't use clips, don't use anything. Oh, yeah. You can see we help them out because it's seven to one. So anyway, 